Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So recently, after I did this project where I used a miniature cabinet card that I created specifically for this project, I received quite a few comments on YouTube and messages through my website and also through email asking me how I created my own cabinet cards. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how I did it and I'm also going to show you a new digital download that allows you to be able to create your own vintage style cabinet cards. So this was the project that I used the mini cabinet card on. Now I have obviously reduced the size down of this cabinet card to a fraction of what it normally would be and I've actually got the two cabinet card images that I originally created for a different project. Now these were graphics that I created for Ian's website. So there's a photograph of us both in our steampunk gear and these were created to go on his website originally. So those were the two. Um, so let me just move that old project. Now as you can see I did reduce this one down considerably just using any photo manipulation software in my case I used Adobe Photoshop just to reduce it down before printing it out and then obviously I've grunged the edges with some vintage photo or distress ink just to make it look a little bit older. So literally those were the two cabinet cards. Now as you can see these cabinet cards are all um, distressed at the edges as part of the graphic because that's the way that I wanted them to be on Ian's website. Now, if you're not familiar with a cabinet card, I will bring in two original cabinet cards from my own collection. And these are two that I have in my collection. Now, a cabinet card was a photograph um, that was taken in Victorian times, that kind of early photography stages, um, so that people could give to friends, family and loved ones as a memento. They were also known as a carte de visite or a visiting card. So if you went to visit a relative you would leave them a photograph on one of these. Now a lot of these um, cabinet cards obviously have the photographer's name on the bottom. We don't know who these people are in these photographs. There are a lot out there that are of obviously just unknown people but some do kick around um, of people that were quite prominent, famous, maybe um, politicians or actors and actresses of the time or even writers, composers and that kind of stuff. I have seen one of, of Liszt uh, and I've seen, oh, sorry not Liszt, Brahms I think it is, I've got a copy of a cabinet card in my digital collection that's of Brahms the composer. So there's lots of these around. Now a lot of these cabinet cards, the majority, don't have anything on the back. Now a lot of them do. Now as with most things cabinet cards in good condition with something on the back can go for quite a lot of money particularly if there's somebody in the photograph that's famous or a celebrity or you know is well known. An ordinary person with nothing on the back you can pick up for a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars at any kind of junk sale and these photographs can be of anything from wedding photos to mementos to soldiers giving their loved ones a photograph of them before they go off to fight or anything like that and they come in different colours as well. The backing cards like on this one where there's nothing on the back again is a different colour to this one. Now in my collection I've got ones that range in colour from like browns to creams to dark greens to some blue ones. I've even got a pink one which I will show you in a moment. So what I've done is I've created a template that I can use to drop in either a photograph in my Adobe Photoshop but I wanted to share with you today where you could do it without using any photo manipulation software if you don't want to change the size. So the actual size of these as you can see using one of the, the Tim Holtzy kind of rulers is just it's about four and a quarter inches by, and that one's too small look. Where's my big ruler? There we go. My big rule. 
So what did I say? Four and a quarter, around about four and a quarter by about five and a half, sorry, six and a half inches in size. So for those of you that are metric, you're looking at around about 11 centimeters or 110 millimeters by around 165 or 16 and a half centimeters. And those sizes are pretty much standard, give or take a few millimeters or a quarter of an inch here, not a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, or even a sixteenth of an inch here and there from different photographers, from different studios, all over the world, because these cards were all over the world. So, what have I done for those people that want to create their own cabinet cards? Well, this is what I've done. I've put together a collection of four cabinet cards. So this is one. So with a back and a front, and I've left the space blank so that you can print and stick a photograph of your choice, whether a vintage one or a family one, over the top to fit. Now you can leave as much gap around the outsides as you want to, or you can bring the page into your photo manipulation software and overlay a photograph in before you print it. So that's one. There's a second one. So this one's from London. That one's from Louisville in Kentucky. I'm presuming KY is Kentucky. Another one. This one is from Lewiston in Maine. Lisbon Street, so I'm presuming American, and this is the pink one that I was telling you about. It's a lovely kind of old antique pink. And then we have another one from the UK from the studio Frank Photographer in Gateshead, which is in the northeast of England. So these are all um, very, very old. Now, what I've done is I've brought them into my photo manipulation software, I've cleaned them up, I've got rid of any blemishes, any blegs. Um, I've left in some cases like the mottled kind of background just to give it that kind of aged and vintage feel. And like on this one, um, the condition on the front wasn't very good but the back was quite good. So I've actually removed all this and used what was left as the background for this one. So you can see there is a little bit of mottling just in that um, background there. So it's going to look pretty good. So just to show you how these look, let's choose one. Let's choose that one, the Studio Frank one. I'll just put those to one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to cut this out. Uh, I'm going to leave the corners square because I do have a corner rounder punch somewhere. So I'll go away, I'll cut these out as best I can <laughs> and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've cut mine out and as you notice they've still got the corners, they haven't got the rounded corners and the reason for that is I'm going to stick them together first before chomping the corners off. So I'm just going to grab some glue, let's just grab the front. Now in this case I'm just going to use some of the um, Tombow Mono Liquid Aqua that clear glue and I'm just going to Dab some around the sides and then just run some down the middle. You can of course use double sided tape if that's more your thing. And then I'm just going to turn them over and then I'm just going to position them. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room with this glue which is what I like. So I can position them pretty much spot on. You know, Mr Bentley running up and down the stairs. It's gloriously sunny day today and he can't decide whether he wants to be inside or outside. He goes outside, lays in the sunshine, gets too hot and then comes back in again. So he's in and out and in and out like I don't know what. Like the hokey cokey, in, out, in, out. The only thing he doesn't do, exactly, shake it all about. Okay, so I've now got the corners. So let me just grab my corner rounder. 
these days, wondering where he put it, there it is. I've just got a tiny little one, this one is from EK Success, I think, looking at the colour, it could be a Martha Stewart one, possibly, probably, I can't remember. Let's try and line those corners up. Now I've specifically done this, that if you've got a quarter inch corner rounder, that you get a better result that fits quite nicely with the way it looks. So if we now turn it over, if I've got a little bit, if I'm a little bit out, I'm not going to worry because what we can do when we're all finished is just bring in a pen, go around the edges or bring in some distressing and make it look a little bit old and grungy. Okay, so there's my card, my blank cabinet card. Photograph wise, I've gone through my um, vintage men digi collection and I've found this handsome chap. So what I've done is I've measured the gap, the space between the top of the writing and then how wide it is and then I've decided that I want to leave a little bit of a gap either side because the photographs on the cabinet cards don't come right the way in. Now I like the cabinet cards that have that black line or the line all the way around them. I think they just look more finished when they're done rather than the ones without. So all of the ones that I've created do have that nice finished line on the front. Obviously on the back but it's on the front so you can see specifically made for that. So I will just quickly cut this photograph out just using my craft knife. I'm using a surgical scalpel because that's the way I've always cut out. And then just along the top. Nice even strokes, not pressing very hard because I don't need to with the scalpel blade. Just a couple of light passes and it just drops out of the paper. There we go. So there's my image. So I'm going to grab, oh, he says, throwing them all over the floor. See if I can find my vintage photo distress pen. There it is. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run that around the edge just so that it hides that raw edge once it's stuck down and glued down. You don't have to do this, this is just one of the things that I like to do. I just think it makes it look a little bit more professionally finished but also just makes it look a little bit older. So if I bring that cabinet card back in and I can lay the photograph over just like so. So I've left a nice kind of even gap all the way around. So let's grab some glue, use the same glue as I did before. Now if you want some decent weight to your um, front and your back when you stick them together then obviously either print them on card or you can back them onto card, put a layer of card in between. It's entirely up to you how heavy you want your cabinet cards to be. If you want them to be authentic, use heavier cardstock. If you're using them just as a project or as a keepsake in a, in a scrapbook page or something like that, then you don't really need to use heavy cardstock. You really don't need it. And again, if you really wanted to make it look good, you could always round the corners of this too. But I think they look better when they're not rounded. I'm just going to position that so it's pretty much in the middle and then just give it a little bit of a push down and then while that's drying I'm going to grab my vintage photo distressing an ink blending doodah that is a technical term, a doodah and let me see whether or not I've got 
some kind of poly mat that I can put down and use for distressing the edges. Just create a bit of space. I apologise for the violence of the colour. It is very bright red. I do appreciate that. So if you've suddenly gone blind, I do apologise. Get some of that ink running and then I can go around the edges just to add a little bit of age and distress. Just make it look like it's been hanging around for a hundred years or so. And of course if you bring it in you can also make just catch the edges of the photograph you've stuck down, which you will be able to do if you print that on. And then turn it over and then do the same thing again. Give it a bit of dirt. So it looks as though it's been sitting in the bottom of a drawer for a hundred to 110 years or so. Maybe stuck in an album. Sometimes you can find whole albums of these cabinet cards at field sales, car boot sales or vintage or junk shops or even antique shops sometimes have sections where you can buy photographs and that kind of thing. So I'll pop that to one side now. And our cabinet card is now grungy. It's now thick because we've now got three layers all stuck together but just to finish off I'm going to just go around the edges once again just because I like to make a sure dot every I and cross every T I don't particularly want anything showing there we go Get rid of that red mac because it really is violent. It's starting to offend me, the colour today. <laughs> so there you go. So there's the old one. Sorry, the new one. And there's the old one. I like this one and I like that one. But I like this one better because it's got a back on it. But you wouldn't really know that's brand new and that's over a hundred years old. So that is the cabinet card done. So again those are just the remaining three other sets of cabinet cards that you can purchase now as a digi download. It's available on my website now, it's there ready to go. So you can then create your own vintage style cabinet cards if you want to but bear in mind if you do want to make them smaller the best idea is to bring the page in say for example if you wanted to create a cabinet card using this pink one the facet and basset one you can bring it into your photo manipulation software bring your photograph in on top as a new layer drop it on there and then reduce the size down to what you want and then print it out it's going to be a lot easier for you to do that if you don't want to do that then just reduce it down to whatever size you want and then you can print your photo to fit whether it's the size of a I don't know photo booth one you can still bring this down to that size print it and then you can stick your photo booth picture on if that's what you want to do create a photo booth picture sized cabinet card for whatever project or memory keeping album that you're working on so I hope you like those if you do please remember to give it a thumbs up Share this video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. But don't forget these are available now to purchase so have at it and have fun. Bye for, bye for now. Oop. Put your teeth in Mike.
I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.